Ed, tonight's agenda. I'm also, Mr. Chairman. Minutes of November 6th, 2017. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to accept the stated. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Privilege of the floor. Anybody here to speak this evening? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Principal's report. Julie. Board uh, uh, Hold it, Nathan. November's busy. Just as October and <laughs> September. <laughs> and August. It's, it's a fun place to be. Um, on November 8th, Plymouth Elementary School held its annual tribute to our veterans. And as always, it was a very special mo uh, morning with local veterans and veterans from Plymouth Elementary School. Parents, um, Mr. Lebeck, a retired teacher, and our Mrs. Marinowski up at the front desk also um, sat as a veteran um, and spent some time honoring them. Later in the or the following week, we had a full house on both Tuesday and on Wednesday for um, our annual Thanksgiving luncheons. And thank you to the middle school students who helped serve serve a delicious uh, turkey dinner. The cafeteria was festive with tablecloths and candles that were created by our first graders, and I actually think we could probably sell those. They're really beautiful. Um, the walls were decorated with student art and writing, all expressing gratitude for the season. And just a shout out to Mrs. Carey, who does a lot of the behind the scenes works for work for that event. On Tuesday, November 28th, Plymouth um, Elementary School hosted Rachel's Challenge, a beautiful program that promotes kindness. Um, we are on a two-year rotation with Rachel's Challenge so that every two years we, ha we host the program here um, and bring it back. And it's no surprise that our students respond by starting right away with a chain reaction of good deeds and kindness um, throughout the community. Um, some of the highlights of the program include leaving a legacy of kindness, showing compassion, practicing acceptance, and learning from your mistake. A special thank you to PES teacher, parent, and community member Andy McDonald for his leadership in um, bringing Rachel's challenge. And as Ms. Murphy said, um, Plymouth Elementary School had 19 students participate in the after school program National NA November Writing Month, better known mm -hmm. as NaNoWriMo. <laughs> It's very, very clever. Uh, 13 of the students met their goals um, for, for words written. They establish a, a number of words, but then they can just write what they want to write. Um, sixth grader Leah B. Song um, wrote 40,359 words. Other writers who met goals and are commended for their, for their novels, Hannah LeClaire, Katie Park, Sarah Craigie, Addison England, Abby Park, Caitlin Missimer, Ainsley Gerard, Brianna Strickland, Liz Douglas, Logan Wiggett, and uh, Karina Flynn and Xavier O'Reilly. Um, in looking at the whole NaNoWriMo, you know, nationally, actually internationally, um, the executive director, Grant Faulkner, says that NaNoWriMo uh, ignites people's superheroic hero creative powers every year by empower empowering them to write their stories. It takes courage, grit, and resilience in wild, imaginative le leaps to write so many words um, toward a novel. And then they listed some of the authors who have done the whole NaNoWriMo, regular, published, read some of these books. I'm like, wow, they were NaNoWriMo graduates. <laughs> um, and they include Sandra Gruen's Water for Elephants, Aaron Morgenstern's The Night Circus, <laughs> Huey Howie's Wool, Rainbow Rowell's Band Girl, Jason Huff's The Darwin Elevator, and Marissa Meyer's Cinder. So I have no doubt that somebody from Plymouth Elementary School will be on that list. Um, and as um, Anne had mentioned, Mrs. Deloge should be commended, really. Um, she brings a lot of joy and fun. Um, they have a great time. It, they go to 6.30 every night, and um, they do a lot of um, fun activities, movement activities 
throughout that um, that time that they're here. So, and on November 14th, Plymouth Elementary School hosted the first of this year's series of Mathalons. Uh, 14 schools competed. Students answering answer challenging questions in categories like numbers and operations, algebra, geometry, um, prob and problem solving. Plymouth came in fourth, last year we were first, but uh, we were expecting that. First place went to Guilford, second to Laconia, and third to Campton. Um, Mr. Greenler, the coach, noted that half of our team is comprised of seventh graders, so the future looks bright. Um, and the math stars include Hannah LeClaire, Nolan Prince, Matt Cleary, Noah Dutile, Ruby Furbish, Ethan Gerard, Anton Smith, Jack Sullivan, Logan Wiggett, and Abby Park. And this past uh, weekend was a great one at Plymouth Elementary School. Um, Saturday morning, we had about over 100 community members turn out to run the seventh annual, <laughs> for those, that's amazing, <laughs> seven years, seventh <laughs> annual Jingle Bell Run and Pancake Breakfast. And what a team effort led by Sarah Sanborn. Um, we have a beautiful running site, and it was fun to see the mixed ages. And afterward, Janet King and Valerie Bick Bickford from um, Cafe Services worked with our crew to serve pancakes, uh, bacon, fruit. My mantra was pancakes, pancakes. <laughs> so uh, it was a great, great community event um, with registrations and donations, raising over $1,500 um, toward winter program scholarships. Um, that, and then later that evening, we were talking about how great the parade was. Plymouth Elementary School Student Council had a float and enjoyed that, but it was also fun to see the hockey players and the gymnasts and the Girl Scouts. It was a great, great event. So um, this week we have on Thursday, Justin Spencer from Recycle Percussion is coming um, from one to two and um, we're gonna have kindergarten, come on over. <laughs> um, K, K through five students and we're also hosting Wentworth and and Romney as well. Um, so we're really super excited about that. Parents are definitely welcome. And then Friday, Community Service Day um, from the Student Council. Students will be out and about doing um, lots of good work. And then December 13th and 20th, winter program begins. <laughs> I just keep saying. Um, briefly, I just wanted to update us on the winter sports. Mr. Underwood gave me some information. Um, everybody's uh, already practicing and underway, and um, he wanted to let you know the numbers. So right now in wrestling, we have 21 participants. Um, boys, 7th and 8th grade basketball, 12. Girls, 7th and 8th basketball, 10. Uh, boys, 5th and 6th grade basketball, 22 and girls fifth and sixth grade basketball 21, um, and then the cross country skiing that's boys and girls combined is 21. Um, so decent numbers. Um, he said that they expected the numbers to be a little bit lower in the seventh and eighth grade basketball teams, but the numbers in the um, fifth and sixth obviously should uh, help us out here coming up here in the future. Uh, the annual fifth and sixth grade basketball tournament is set for Wednesday, February 7th uh, through Sunday, February 11th, and this is the 28th year of holding that tournament. Um, then the last part is uh, the Elks Hoop Shoot. Um, the first round of it took place back on Wednesday, November 15th over at Plymouth High School. And our PES representatives in the eight and nine year old group were Matthew Valente and Iris Lamero, both of them earning first place. In the 10 and 11 year old, um, it was Lucas Diamond and Samantha Batchelder and Luke um, earned first place again in his age group. Uh, and at age 12 and 13, it was Aiden O'Brien and Anna Apriliano. Um, Anna finished second overall and Aiden took first. So all those students that ended up finishing in first place, Matthew, Iris, Luke, and Aiden, they will advance to the next round, which is over in Guilford uh, sometime in early January. I'm not sure if it was January 7th or January 17th, something like that. So that's it in the world of sports. <laughs> ESPN. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Consent items, claims and payroll. And any correspondence, Mark? We did. We received uh, approval from the state for <coughs> our um, uh, programs, uh, grades five, five through eight. We used to call them L5. They're now mm -hmm. SOAR, and that program was approved. 
again by the state and um, the former uh, NCR program uh, we now call boost and that program was again approved by the state so mm -hmm. we have new personnel we have new names um, and uh, programs are going well and it's uh, we got a very complimentary review by the state for the quality of the program so should be pretty proud All right. discussion items Fiscal year 18 budget update. Yes, um, you know, appropriations totals in front of you. Um, they're, they're tracking uh, as we expect. Um, the bottom line is not as good as it looks. We just haven't done some of the encumbering. And I also need to go in and clean up some things. There's a couple expenses I don't understand. So, but I have not spent any time with your bookkeeper. So um, I will be doing that in the next couple of weeks. But all in all, big picture, we're, we're online. Um, to, to break even on the appropriation side. Long way to go. Lots of surprises um, in this sort of business, but uh, so far, so good. Okay. Any questions for Mark? None. <coughs> Fiscal year 19 draft budget proposal. All right, this is the first, um, first look at next year's budget, and um, I'm going to give you three sheets. One is a blue sheet that sort of outlines the highlights and the lowlights. Um, the other single sheet will be a revenue sheet and then the appropriations totals. And I will walk through uh, what Julie and I uh, have put together for your first, first round of the budget. Um, usually tonight is the night you take it all in and then we say in January be ready to talk about these issues and Julie uh, has a couple of grades for you to look at as we talk about the RTI program so um, I know I've heard from uh, <coughs> numerous members from the community about the impact of the tax rate and uh, I am very cognizant of that so I think this budget reflects that at the same time it keeps our core programs um, solid and uh, uh, we have a few things to talk about but uh, all in all the, the core program is, is, in, is in, uh, mm -hmm. intact so let me hand these out Page tells the story. That's a pretty hefty cut. Sounds fast. Everybody. It's going to be a great budget, beautiful budget. We're all going to love it. I'm going to uh, go through the blue sheet. That's the story of the budget, uh, condensed version. And then uh, you'll get a feel for uh, <coughs> the big picture. The 1100 account uh, contains 33.6 positions. Um, that's everyone who's here right now. And Julie has a request for a third kindergarten teacher that, that is out there, and we'll talk about that. Um, there may be opportunities to consolidate from three teachers to two teachers in some one through five classes. Um, it would be a consideration if we keep the RTI uh, model that we're using um, and that RTI position is in the budget. Um, the position uh, that we've removed from the budget is the vacant point six music position. So that, that, that's not in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, and please note that this account is exclusive of any negotiated collective bargaining increases. They would be on a warrant article for the mm -hmm. voters to vote on. 
Um, the other accounts are either level funded or down. Uh, in the case of um, Line 11 supplies, Julie and Kelly are going to lead an effort to uh, use up everything we have in the building. Oftentimes people order things as, as sort of a routine. Um, we're going to go through the closet. We've done this in a couple of buildings. We're going through the closets and just say, uh, you know, all the stuff is uh, out in the library. Take what you need. And you'd be surprised uh, the stuff that we have in the building. We haven't done that in a while. Um, in the 1200 account, special ed, um, there's a significant reduction in, in um, the special ed salary account, but those salaries, we're, we're really cleaning up the way we do preschool, and we're trying to get all the expenses for preschool in one place. So you'll see that um, a lot of salaries have been moved to the 1840 account, um, and, and the position of director has been moved into the SAU office. Uh, it's been consolidated with another, with another position. It would be all grant funded. So that's, um, um, that's a half a position that's out of the Plymouth budget. Uh, it was grant funded anyway. It's just been moved out of your budget. So it's nice. It's a lot cleaner for the auditors as they track the federal money. Uh, and the other salary reductions in that account, we had uh, a lot of retirements in there. And they were, it was some one-time money that was in that account. That's been eliminated. And then um, also with some staff turnover, um, that reflects uh, some savings also. Uh, special ed aids reflects 21 paras, and that's based on IEPs and programming. Co-curricular, there are some salary reductions, and they're going to reflect uh, fewer um, school teams and offerings. There's a lump of money in there, and it's quite frankly, it's going to be based on what the kids sign up for. Um, so we run a lot of things for you know a handful of kids. Um, with the impact of the tax rate, we may not be able to do that. Um, so, but again, um, it'll be based on, uh, not, we're not deciding tonight whether we have this or that. The money would be there as a pool, and it would be based, uh, based on how, what the kids end up signing up for. Um, the after-school program, the 1490 account, there's a $30,000 subsidy that's been in that, uh, in that line item. And we've eliminated that subsidy. Um, I've talked with the selectmen and also the park and rec director. They're aware of that's in that that cut has been made. Um, yeah, so overall, the appropriations total is down uh, four hundred eighteen thousand eighty-seven dollars from last year. It's a five point two percent cut in, in appropriations. On the revenue side of the budget, you'll note that revenues are down $177,266. Um, we have zero in the unreserved fund balance. We will have an unreserved fund balance if everything goes well. It's just that this time of year we always present zero, so the community gets worst case scenario, uh, uh, and then they get to vote on that. Adequate, our adequate education grant is down 13,376. That's based on an estimate from the state. And I, um, that's an estimate from the state. Last year's estimate, the state did not, we didn't get the money the state did. That was part of the reason that we took a little bit of a surprise in our, in our school portion of the tax rate. So um, we gotta go with what the state gives us at this moment in time. CAD 8 is down a bit. Our regular tuition is down $75,000. That's a reflection of, quite frankly, um, just we have some Ellsworth kids who come here, but there's no more Warren kids. There's, uh, I mean, we're really down to just a handful of kids coming from Ellsworth. And then IDEA funding, that's down, uh, special ed from the federal government, that's down $25,000. So you can see we're down uh, 164000 So that appropriations cut of 418 and then you take the revenue we're not going to get, uh, 177. That means the total assessment in this budget is um, down 238,770, which would reflect a 55 cent cut on the tax rate. Again, this is exclusive of any Warren articles that, that take place. Um, I know we've talked about greenhouse. I know we've talked about partitions in one of the wings. Uh, and that certainly is something the board can talk about, but uh, neither is contained in the budget. All right. Again, my motivation was um, to keep our core educational program in as, as intact as I could. All right.
Julie, you want to talk a little bit about the class size structure? Sure. And what we'll do tonight is just sort of say, here's, here are the class size numbers, here are potential opportunities, and then in January we'll talk about, we'll see one, see if the numbers change, uh, and two, um, where do you want to go with the overall budget? So just a breakdown um, of what it looks like with the anticipated enrollment for next year for um, with two teachers <coughs> per grade, um, just the, the class size breakdown, or three teachers per grade. So um, just to walk through it, um, Frank Gonzalez went and did some research and uh, uh, got the input from all of the different preschools and in, t in daycares in the community and right now we have 37 definite heads coming mm -hmm. to Plymouth Elementary School and that's really helpful that we did that last year and that number was still pretty accurate I think within five students so um, that's that's a pretty solid number uh, and we won't really know until May so that's why I know that that we have always talked about keeping those class sizes at the at the younger grades smaller. So that's where I would envision three teachers. Um, in grade one, we have 30 students and two teachers um, this year, so we would keep the same uh, for next year, two teachers, um, 15 and 15. Grade two, uh, we have 46 students for next year, so uh, if we had two teachers, it would be 23 and 23 or 15, 15, and six, 16. Grade three, it's grade three and four, that always seems to be the area where we land. Um, grade three, we have 37 students. Uh, if we had two teachers, the student-teacher ratio would be, uh, two teachers, it would be 18 and 19. If we had three, it would be 12, 12, and 13. Uh, in grade four, 41 students. If we had two teachers, it would be 20 students in 20, 20 and 21. If we had three teachers, 13, 14, and 14. Grade five, 49 uh, students, 24 and 25. Uh, grade five is when we start to um, move more toward content area, but, um, and that's a pretty big class size for, for us. Uh, grade six, it's grade six, seven, and eight, and those, those are quite the fluctuations in numbers to go from 61 one year and 41 the next year. Um, but those are, those are the grades where we really stick with the three teachers per grade because of the content. Yeah, based on certification for content. So <laughs> you can do self-contained in sixth grade, but it's worked very well for us to run it at, similar to the seventh and eighth grade because of the impact of content. So those are the numbers and those are the, the conversations that we'll have in January um, in terms of specifics. But certainly we could talk tonight about numbers in general um, if, you, if you'd like. And the specialists are all in the budget. The only reduction has been that point six position that we haven't filled the last couple of years. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, if, uh, if we went to two teachers in one of the lower grades, could yeah. we add in an, uh, an aid of some sort into one of those classes? Yeah, we, we, we'd have the interventionist. We have, remember, we the have the interventionist and yeah. two program aides with the interventionist. So mm -hmm. you, have, you have three people <coughs> working on content. Both the aides are one of the aides is, uh, is cert certifiable, right. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and the other is, uh, uh, both are really yeah. certifiable, yeah. yeah. So we're, um, yeah, yeah, we're pretty comfortable with the interventionist model. We think that focusing on those tier two kids, those kids that, that just need a little bit of help, they're not identified, um, they're just falling behind and, and just a boost here and a boost there, I think that program works pretty well for them. So, um, you know, when you look at numbers like uh, 18 and 19, and then you have an interventionist and the programming staff, I'm pretty comfortable with two teachers at that level. Uh, well, they'll be together. You'll have the larger sizes for, um, uh, for phys ed and those sorts of things. But again, in, in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, you know, content, mm -hmm. you'd have, you know, 27 
um, divided potentially by three uh, right. if the interventionist is there with the with the two with the two teachers. So you're looking at learning groups of uh, you know nine kids, mm -hmm. ten kids, and that's certainly uh, very very reasonable. I mean it's private school standard. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the makeup of these classes though? That, that's um, a big always a big issue. Right, we have in. Um, Second grade, next year's second grade, we'll have eight special education students. Um, and then the other big, big classes, grade three has six, grade uh, four will have seven, grade five has 10 special education students. Yeah, so. we can touch grade five anyway. <laughs> grade three and grade four. Do all of the special ed students have uh, someone assigned to them? No, they okay. do not. So is there a level of representation? Do we have, do we have a rough idea of you know, the sixth, six students in grade three? Do we know roughly how many specialists there are? Uh, for next year? Yeah. We have probably two or three other adults in that grade level. Who support and, and the special support staff. staff does a great job as far as placing them so that they they help a lot of students. Mm -hmm. Okay. The the tier two support that you supported us with this year is really taking root. I mean, it's just starting to take hold. We have not had this. Um, last year, Fran and Kyla came and talked about um, just that we're really strong as far as Tier 1, our overall instruction, and we have, mm -hmm. we're really strong with tier, tier 3 with our programs. But that Tier 2 piece um, has been an area that, you know, we've just been hustling all the time trying to make that work. So this has been a year where we've really had a chance to spend a lot of time and give a lot of support. Um, to students, you can see in the cafeteria um, in the library, there are tables where students are are working together and reading. So it's um, it would like it would be nice to kind of um, keep that strong. Mm -hmm. What's the impact to the budget of taking one teacher? About a hundred thousand. Roughly, roughly, yeah. yeah. But again, we uh, if you if we move um, the current first grade has three three teachers, right? So if we move um, one of those teachers or, or a body could come from mm -hmm. the second who um, into kindergarten, um, then you're fine. You've met Julie's request. The issue becomes if you um, take you know if we if we reduce a little bit more. Um, then that would be that would be a savings. Mm -hmm. So, and a hundred thousand dollars is not a bad number to work with. There are some some folks who are more expensive, some people less expensive, and that's just for the cameras. That's not someone's salary. That that that's salary and, and an entire and benefits benefit package. And the whole package. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, any questions? in front of us. Mm -hmm. I think it'll make it a lot easier to discuss this again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other business and discussion? No. Sure. Okay. Privilege of the floor. Mm -hmm. So I have a question about... <laughs> Sorry. You went. Okay. So I have a question about cutting the $30,000 for Parks and Rec. Yes. Is that money going to be made up somewhere else through Parks and Rec budgets? Or are they just out with 30K? There would be, um, that would either be made up by uh, park and rec budget at the town level, okay. or um, it would be um, higher fees for folks using the service. I just, my, one of my soapbox comments is always class size, and I think I've always <laughs> said that, and I know it's just the beginning of the discussions. Um, 
but I do think it's an investment in the community to keep the class sizes smaller. We can create a family, create more of a community type environment. Um, you have those those more manageable smaller class sizes. It feels feels like family. Mr. Chairman, so Mr. Chairman, I just want to give my two cents that. Mm -hmm. I would I would probably not counter, but I to make you aware that if you wanted the smaller class sizes, one of the options would be to cut the RTI support. So, and then the responsibility for tiers, tiers two and three would be with the, with the classroom teacher. So, please be aware of, of that. Can I ask a question? In, in terms of context, what is small to you? Is there, is there a border? I 18, 19, 20 is getting too big. It, it's a very different feel between um, 19 students, 20 students, to 15. I know it's only four or five students, but in my 20 years experience, mm -hmm. that, that small size is Okay. Okay, any more comment? Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. I will entertain a motion to go in the non-public session. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.